Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Action and reaction are equal to each other. Ella Wheeler Wilcox expressed the above law of mind as follows. Give to the world the best you have, and the best will come back to you. Give love, and love to your heart will flow, as strength in your utmost need. Have faith, and a score of hearts will show. Dear faith in your word and deed. For life is the mirror of king and the beggar. Tis just what you are and do. Then give to the world the best you have, and the best will come back to you. To a justice to fit, adapt, accommodate, regulate, to put in working order. In order to adjust to life, it is necessary that you become a channel through which the life principle flows freely, harmoniously, joyously, and lovingly. The solution to all your problems is to get acquainted with and use the divine presence and power in your life. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace, and good shall come unto thee. I suggest that each person establish a definite method of working, and that he practice it regularly and systematically every day. For example, determine for yourself what is the most troublesome problem you have. Decide to solve this problem now by realizing that infinite intelligence within you knows the way out. Its nature is to respond to you. It knows only the answer, and the nature of infinite intelligence is responsiveness. That is, your answer is as certain as the rising of the moon tonight. One young man in our audience had experienced a poverty complex for many years and had received no answers to his prayers. He had prayed for prosperity, but the fear of poverty continuously weighed on his mind. Naturally, he attracted more lack and limitation. Your subconscious mind accepts the dominant of two ideas. This is a law. After talking with him, he learned to pray as follows. I know there is only one source, the life principle from which all things flow. It created the universe and all things therein contained. I am a focal point of the divine presence. My mind is open and receptive. I am a free-flowing channel for harmony, beauty, guidance, wealth, and the riches of the infinite. I know that wealth, health, prosperity, and success are released from within and appear on the without. I am now in harmony with the infinite supply, and just as I would adjust an instrument in my laboratory, I am now mentally adjusting my focused attention on the eternal source of all blessings. I wish for everyone all the blessings of life. I am open and receptive to God's riches, spiritual, mental, and material, and they flow to me in avalanches of abundance. This young man changed his attitude of mind and focused on divine riches rather than poverty and made it a special point not to deny what he affirmed. In a month's time, his whole life was transformed. He affirmed the above truths morning and evening for about ten minutes, knowing that he was actually writing down these truths in his subconscious mind, causing the latter to be activated and to release the hidden treasures. Whatever you impress on your subconscious mind is expressed on the screen of space, and your conscious mind is the pen, P-E-N, the thinker, and what you think and feel comes to pass. Aristotle said, Resistance is the cause of every monstrosity. A monstrosity in the body could be a growth, a tumor, or a lesion, or any other abnormal condition. A woman was resenting and hating her ex-husband. In addition, her physician told her she had developed a serious lesion. She was resisting the free flow of the life principle which flows as harmony, beauty, joy, and love. In other words, the life more abundant. She was blocking the infinite healing presence. She finally realized what she was doing and came to a clear-cut decision to pray as follows. I surrender my husband to the God presence completely. Whenever he comes to my mind, I affirm, God's love fills your mind and heart. Then she adjusted her mind to the infinite healing presence and claimed frequently, the infinite healing presence which created me from a cell knows all the processes and functions of my body. It knows how to heal. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And this healing love fills my mind and heart, and I am made whole and perfect. At the end of three weeks she returned for another examination by her doctor, and the lesion had disappeared, 
Divine love dissolves everything unlike itself. There are people who resist the weather, new ideas, the headlines of the newspapers, and even their neighbors. There always seems to be friction in their mental and physical relationship. Happy is he who trusted in thee. Adjustment takes place in your own mind when your thoughts are harmonious, peaceful, loving, and based on eternal verities. In other words, when you get along with yourself, you will be able to get along with others. If your habitual thinking is based on resentment, fear, ill will, hostility, self-condemnation, you will project your hostility and animosity onto others, and you will experience very poor relationship in your business, home, or professional work. Learn to be pliable, flexible, and adjustable. If there is someone in your office who is obstreperous, petulant, and fractious, realize you did not create him. Loose him and let him go mentally. You're not responsible for his warped or twisted mentality, and you should realize he has no power to disturb you. It is always a movement of your own thought which disturbs or annoys you. Marcus Aurelius said 2,000 years ago, If the cucumber is bitter, don't eat it. Very simple, isn't it? Ask yourself, what is my aim in life? Let the answer be peace, harmony, and divine wisdom. Because this is so, identify with your aim and not with the boorishness or surliness of others. Affirm. Divine peace and harmony govern me and reign supreme in my life. When you mentally and emotionally identify with your spiritual aim in life, nothing in the external world disturbs you. Stop giving power, prerogatives, and privileges to people who have no power. No one disturbs you but yourself. It's a movement of your own thoughts, your own emotions, your actions and reactions. They all take place in your own mind. Have you ever noticed the way water flows according to the line of least resistance? You may have watched a stream flowing down from the mountain. It never quarrels, fights, or resists the rocks, boulders, or obstacles in its way. The water goes around the boulders or flows over them and eventually finds its way back to the ocean. All the stumps, stones, and trees disappear or wear away since nothing can seriously impede the flow of the streams back to the ocean. You are a river of life, and your purpose is to meet challenges, difficulties, and problems, and to overcome them, not be mentally fighting or quarreling with them, but by meeting them head on while realizing that joy is in overcoming. Say to yourself, the problem is here, but infinite intelligence within me is here also. It knows only the answer. This problem is divinely outmatched. I will grapple with this problem courageously, and through the wisdom and the power of the infinite, I will overcome. With this attitude, you will become victorious, and you will move onward and upward. An engineer whom I know has a wonderful technique for meeting what he calls so-called insuperable obstacles. His constant prayer is the streams of life, power, wisdom, intelligence, joy and peace flow through me like a golden river, revealing to me everything I need to know and giving me the strength to complete all assignments in divine order. He has made his adjustment with the life principle and he has completed every assignment in divine order. Do not try to manipulate or change other people. Permit them to have their political or religious beliefs, their peculiarities, eccentricities, and abnormal abnormalities. Judge not, and where you have no judgment, you experience no suffering. Where there is no opinion, there is no suffering, you know. Where there is no judgment, there is no pain. Establish the right relationship to the life principle by realizing the life principle is always seeking to express itself through you as the life more abundant. If you are angry, hateful, resentful, or are engaging in self-condemnation or self-criticism, your foot is on the hose and the waters of life 
do not flow through you. These negative emotions get snarled up in your subconscious mind and have negative outlets, such as mental and physical disorders. Become an open channel for the Divine Presence. Realize you're a focal point of the Divine Life. And like an electric bulb, you are here to let your light so shine before men that they see your good works, thereby glorifying and revealing your faith in the infinite intelligence and infinite power and infinite life principle within you. A lonely person has shut out friends from his life. He is not in tune with the infinite and usually is nursing some psychic trauma, saying to himself, I have been hurt before. I will not get friendly with people, lest I get hurt again. All this is foolishness. Every person is an epitome of the divine. And when you exalt the divinity in the midst of you, and salute the divinity in others, you will automatically radiate friendship, love, and goodwill to all people, and you will never lack for friends. You must be a friend to have a friend. Do you think the others in your office should change and make the adjustment? There is no one to change but yourself. When you change, your world magically melts in the image and likeness of your contemplation. If uh, married, you and your spouse should adjust to each other's peculiarities and idiosyncrasies, overlooking each other's shortcomings, but focusing on and exalting the qualities which endear you one to the other. If you are in tune with the infinite and full of goodwill to all, there will be no friction or excess tension, and you will have no bodily disturbances. A young woman was resisting life by complaining, I am leading a humdrumming existence, I am lonesome, frustrated, and I have no friends. I lead a drab, weary existence, she learned that her thought is creative, and that by thinking along these lines, she was compounding her misery, because whatever we give attention to, the subconscious magnifies. After learning something of the laws of life, she reversed her mental attitude and began to affirm frequently and habitually, I am happy, joyous, and free. I am loving, kind, harmonious, and peaceful. I sing the song of praise and joy in the Lord, which is my strength. For the Lord is that lordly power within me, my mind, my spirit, which created me, the invisible part of me. She realized that whatever she attaches to I am, she becomes, which is an age-old Hindu truth. Whatever you attach to I am, you become. You can say, I'm poor, I'm deaf, I'm no good, I'm a flop, I'm a failure. You'll become all these things. On the other hand, you can say, I'm illumined, I'm inspired, I'm successful, I'm happy, joyous, and free. Feel it, believe it. She made a habit of affirming the above wonderful truths. Her whole life was changed from her former so-called drab existence to fullness of life, including marriage to a young dentist, a new home, plus a new perspective and a new insight into the wonders of that infinite life principle within her. Let us have a meditation now. Know that the light dispels darkness, so does the love of the good overcome all evil. Love and hate cannot dwell together. Love casts out fear. Turn the light of the infinite upon all fear or anxious thoughts in your mind, and they flee away. The dawn, the light of truth, appears, and the shadows, fear and doubt, flee away. No divine love watches over you, guides you, makes clear the path for you. Realize you're expanding into the divine. Divine love surrounds you, unfolds you, and enwraps you. Divine love goes before you today and every day, making straight, joyous, and glorious your way. There is a miraculous healing power within you, which made you. This infinite healing presence is flowing through you now, vitalizing, energizing, cleansing, purifying your whole being, so that your whole body dances to the rhythm of the eternal God. Man's greatest need is to believe in himself, in what he is doing, and in his ultimate destiny. Self-reliance, or self-confidence, finds its greatest outlet when it is accompanied by a belief that the real self 
of man is God, and that with God all things are possible. Shakespeare spoke about the divinity which shapes your ends, rough you it how you will. The Bible gives the key to building spiritual self-reliance. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must first believe that God is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Down through the ages all men and women who have possessed spiritual self-reliance have had a deep abiding conviction that they were one with the God presence within. God is the living spirit within you. God is spirit, and they that worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. A spirit has no face, form, or figure. It's timeless, shapeless, and ageless. You worship no man. You give your attention, your devotion, your loyalty to the spirit within you, which created the universe and created you. It's all-powerful, knows all, and sees all. When you're in tune with it, that infinite power responds to you, and you do marvelous things. Uh, great men down through the ages were sure of themselves, without being aggressive, egotistical, or intolerant. Jesus, Moses, Buddha, Lao Tzu, Confucius, Muhammad, many others accomplished the so-called impossible through the absolute conviction that they could do what they set out to do through the divine power which strengthened and inspired them. They were all men, born like you were. You can accomplish little in this world without faith. The farmer, when he plants see his seed, has faith in the science of agriculture. The chemist has faith in the laws and principles of chemistry. The doctor has faith in his knowledge of anatomy, physiology, materia medica, and pharmacology. He has faith in his skill as a surgeon. The engineer has implicit faith in the laws of mathematics, stress and strain, and other principles of the universe. And he builds a building according to scientific laws which existed before any man walked this earth or before any church was ever formed. You can have the same abiding faith in the laws of your own mind, which are the same yesterday, today, and forever. A man is living in the dark ages who thinks that the principles of chemistry and physics and mathematics are different than the principles and laws operating in his own mind. These mental and spiritual laws are just as dependable and undeviating as the laws of gravitation, Boyle's law, or Avogadro's law. We know for a, for a fact that think good, good follows. Think evil, and evil follows. If you think of yourself as a failure and you picture, your, picture failure, you will fail. Think of success, realize you're born to succeed and to win, for the infinite cannot fail. Picture yourself successful, happy, and free, and you will be. Whatever you think and feel is true in your conscious mind is embodied in your subconscious and comes t to pass into your experience. That's the law of mind, undeviating, immutable, timeless, and changeless. We're not talking about faith in creeds or dogmas or traditions or any religious persuasion. We're talking about faith in the, your own thought, in your own feeling, in the laws of your own mind, in the goodness of God and the land of the living. Faith in that creative intelligence which responds to your thought. You can have faith that you're going to be ill when exposed to a draft or that you will catch the virus or a severe cold because someone sneezes in your presence. You can have faith that you will fail, but your faith is in the wrong thing, isn't it? And your business ventures will turn out badly. A woman once said to me, for ten years I had absolute faith I would be alone through life. No one would marry me and I would be poor and miserable. Then she said, I read a book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, a book I wrote many years ago, and I applied the prayers outlined. Now I am happily married, have a marvelous husband, and have been blessed with three lovely children. This woman reversed her faith in the negative to a joyous expectancy of the best in all phases of her life. Fear is faith in the wrong thing. Fear is faith upside down. Have faith in the goodness of God in the land of the living. Have faith in divine love. Have faith in the healing presence which made you to heal you. The law of this woman's mind responded to her belief, for the law of life is the law of belief. What do you believe in? To believe is to accept something as true. Believe in whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, believe in these things. The first step in building self-reliance or self-confidence is to believe that infinite power within you, which grows hair on your face, 
which digests your food, grows nails, grows, uh, grows uh, your nails when you're sound asleep, and grows hair on your head. It watches over you when you're sound asleep. It governs your heartbeat, and all the vital organs of your body, and all the processes of your body are controlled by that infinite intelligence. That's what we're talking about. For example, if you cut yourself, it heals you. If you burn yourself, it reduces the edema, gives you new tissue and skin. It always seeks to heal you. That's the life principle in you. And you know you're alive. You know you have a mind. And you know you have that spirit because you can feel the spirit of joy, of rapture, and ecstasy, and love when you look into your child's eye. All these are invisible, yet they're real. So believe in that infinite power within you. Recognize and know that the self of you is God. That's your higher self, the living spirit within you, that was never born, will never die. Water wets it not, fire burns it not, wind blows it not away. It's eternal. It is the very life principle in you, through you, and all around you. The second step is to commune regularly with this infinite presence and power, and have a vision, realizing you go where your vision is. And your vision is what you're mentally looking at, what you're giving attention to, what you're thinking quietly, silently, and feelingly at this moment. That's where you're going. And that's what's going to happen to you. Let your vision be on abundance, right action, inspiration, and divine guidance. And you will become like the perennial mountain of snow, which when melted by the heat of the sun, flows downward like a river of life, giving nourishment and sustenance to the valleys. What difference does it make if you have floundered and failed many times, now that you know the divine presence indwells you, and that the infinite intelligence and infinite power and the infinite life principle is the God presence within you? You know it responds to you, wants you to be happy. Stir up that divine gift within you. Wake up the sleeping giant within you. Trust that creative intelligence within you. More so even than you have ever trusted your human father or mother. When the thought comes to you, I cannot do this, affirm. But the divine presence can. It's infinite presence. It's the infinite power. There's nothing to oppose it or challenge it. It's almighty. If the thought comes, look at all the difficulties and obstructions. Realize and know. And say boldly to yourself, infinite intelligence and infinite power knows no obstructions, delays, or impediments. Find an affirmation which counteracts all your negations and your life will become more blessed and beautiful through the years. You will find your obstructions and challenges will be transformed into opportunities. Your fear will turn to faith, and your doubt will turn into certainty that the infinite healing presence is within you, and wonders happen as you tune in upon it. Recently, I had an intensely interesting conversation with a hotel proprietor in Lisbon, Portugal, he told me that he had started out as a waiter in a small restaurant. When the boss would ask him to do something special, he would often say, I am going to try to do it. His boss finally said to him, Never say, I am going to try. Say, I am going to do it. And know that you can do it, and then the power will respond to you. He said, I profited from that advice, and I never again said, I am going to try. I began to believe in myself. I know that infinite power indwells me, for the Bible says the kingdom of God or intelligence is within you. His secret was, I'm going to do it. He began to affirm, perhaps a thousand times a day, I'm going to have a big hotel and own it. He believed that through the power of the infinite, he would do exactly that. The answer came in a strange way, he continued. I won at roulette in Monaco, the equivalent of $100,000 in American money. I opened this hotel, and now I have paid off the mortgage. I have prospered beyond my fondest dreams. This man said he had felt an overwhelming urge to go to the tables at Monaco, and he asked a friend to accompany him and show him the ropes. He knew he would win. It was an inner silent knowing of the soul. He had fabulous winnings, and when he had enough money, $100,000, for a deposit on his hotel, he stopped and never gambled again. This was the way his subconscious mind answered his prayer, for a hotel of his own. The ways of your subconscious are past finding out. Money is just an idea, a symbol of exchange, 
There is nothing evil in the universe, and nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Good and evil are the movements of man's own mind, relative to the infinite life principle within him, which is forever perfect, whole and complete in itself. Make up your mind now, this minute, that you can do what you want to do, and can be what you sincerely want to be, and can have what you wish to possess. And it will be done to you as you believe. Follow the age-old maxim. Be sure you are right, then go ahead. Let nothing move you or shake your conviction. Make it a part of your mentality. And with this kind of belief, you will inevitably succeed and move forward in life. What is it that the immensely wealthy man or the prominent businessman possesses that you do not? Only one thing. It is self-reliance or self-confidence. He believes in himself and the powers within him. Both of which, of course, mean the same thing. Self-reliance or self-confidence are when Confidence means with faith. Faith in a principle in the powers of your mind, just like an engineer has faith in the principles of mathematics, faith in the principle of strain and stress. You meet men and women who have reached the top of their professions. They're successful in the art of living. They have marvelous homes. They have wonderful children. They're contributing to humanity in countless ways. They're successful in their prayer life, relationship with the divine, relationship with people. All this is due to their implicit trust and faith in that inner power within them. They place their whole reliance on that infinite guiding principle, on the divine love and the divine protection in all ways. Their words, actions, demeanor, and general attitude radiate power and confidence, and thus win you respect the first time you meet them. Last year I interviewed a man at Hilo, Hawaii, he was very wealthy, but he sadly said to me, I am nobody. No one cares for me. Frankly, no one did, for the simple reason that he did not respect or care for the self within him. He was down on himself, and if you are cruel or mean to yourself, others will be cruel and mean to you, for as within, so without. This man was down on himself, even though he had vast holdings of real estate and large bank deposits. I explained to him that he was constantly criticizing and belittling himself, and that doing that, others must treat him the same way, and that if he expected to accomplish precisely nothing of himself, neither would anyone expect any more of him. For as within, so without, the inside controls the outside. I pointed out to him that the riches of the infinite were within him and all around him, Shakespeare said, all things be ready, if the mind be sold. All he had to do was to call on the infinite presence and power, and it would respond to his thought. He began to use some of the great eternal truths of the Bible, which I outlined for him as follows. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the living God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall make plain thy paths. Trust him, believe in him, and he shall bring it to pass. This is the way the Lord hath created you. Rejoice and be glad that that infinite being created you. And know it is always with you, and it's capable of healing you, restoring you, vitalizing and energizing you. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that, were, that were, are called according to his purpose. God in the midst of you is healing you now. 